Just like the title of the video said, we're going to take a close look at this 140 grain FTX load from Hornady, and we're going to compare it against a 140 grain XTP. Now these are hand loads, but I have engineered them to be similar velocity to the factory Hornady FTX bullets. And we are, we're going to do a deep dive and compare velocities, muzzle velocities, downrange velocity, and a terminal performance because I've got some ballistic gel set up right over there. So we're going to really ring out this 140 grain FTX load. And then the last thing we're going to do, and this came up in the comments, um, we're going to compare velocity using these hand loads. We're going to compare velocity between uh, the, the Winchester 1892. This is a Moroku Winchester. Really nice gun. You've seen it on the channel before. Actually, the 357 version you haven't seen very much. But, uh, and we're going to compare the Moroku Winchester with the Rossi, the Rossi 92 and see if you get the same velocity with the same ammo out of the Rossi that you do with the Winchester. That's a big intro. And with that said, Hi, George here, and welcome to Tales from Target Suite, where I'll share my perspective on guns and shooting, and we'll have an adventure or two that will make even a grown man smile. And, uh, and I got two lever guns here. We're going to do some investigative work, which I love doing on the channel, and I hope we're going to answer some questions that you've been interested in. But right now, I'm going to warm up the Moroku Winchester 1892. I hope I can find all that brand new brass from Starline down in these yellow leaves. <laughs> but what a great gun, the Winchester 1892 from the Moroku factory in Japan. They're making some fantastic guns. But let's do that same thing now with the Rossi because it's also a sweet shooting gun. And I'm gonna load five rounds and we'll warm up this gun as well. Here we go. You know, I want to thank my friend Tom. In gratitude I am for his gift of the, this box of, uh, of Hornady uh, 140 grain FTX bullets. He gave me these a long time ago, probably over a year but I'm down to three left, and that's after I did the chronograph work. And so I'm gonna play that footage for you right here. And I'll just tell you real quick what we got on the chronograph with the FTX loads. It has a published velocity, by the way, of, of uh, muzzle velocity of 1440 and a 100 yard velocity of 1143. But these are pointy bullets, right? And so uh, you expect them to perform downrange, maybe slip through the airstream a little bit uh, uh, with a little more lightning and um, but at, uh, at out of the 20 inch Moroku Winchester that 1400 uh, velocity foot per second velocity uh, boosted to uh, an average of 1836 feet per second that's that's fairly legitimate um, velocity and um, and the and I said I tried to engineer these XTP rounds right here I tried to engineer these to have a similar velocity and I got close. Instead of 1,836 feet per second, these guys here are scooting at 1,903. That was the three shot average. Uh, but here's the big question because these do have pointy rounds. What does the uh, downrange uh, velocity loss, how does it compare between a pointy bullet and a not pointy bullet? And so right now, let's load up the FTX bullet, the 140 grain FTX. Let's shoot it into the ballistic gel and we'll, then we'll shoot a second bullet and we'll put slow motion on, of course. We hope to record the uh, temporary wound cavity. We'll record, of course, the penetration unless the bullet blows out the side and we'll compare performance between the 140 grain XTP hollow point and the 140 grain FTX factory ammo.
So let's get set up with that. Now let me see if I can get both of these side by side. The first shot's gonna be the FTX, and then the second shot is gonna be the XTP. Okay, I got both slow motion, so let's look at those real quick. Well, that was interesting. I, it's hard to tell, you know, there's no scientific data there, but the image seems to say that the XTP um, provided a lot of energy, more energy up front than the FTX. But that's just, that's my, that's just my personal view looking at the images. And I haven't looked at it in detail, slow motion, as well as, as much as you have by now. And I probably might change my mind a little bit once I get to editing, but I'll post some weights right here. I've, I did pull out the uh, the XTP bullet because it was just laying between the um, the two gel blocks, so we got exactly 16 inches of penetration with this guy, and it looks like about 19 inches of penetration with the FTX bullet. But uh, let's talk about that FTX polymer tip, the secant ogive. And, um, and the, uh, the assumption is that you're gonna get better downrange muzzle velocity retention because it's got a pointy nose on it. But let's see what I came up with here. And we'll just go through this real quick. But, um, but I said earlier with the FTX, we got a, um, 1,836 at foot per second average. And at 100 yards, we got, um, I only captured two velocities at 100 yards, but they averaged to be 1360. And uh, they were actually 1359 and 1361. So that's remarkably close between two, two shots at 100 yards. And so the difference there is 476 feet per second. That's the difference between muzzle velocity and 100 yard velocity. The difference is 476 feet per second and that is a 26% loss in muzzle velocity. Now with the XTP, we had a three shot average of 1903. I mentioned that earlier um, at the muzzle at 100 yards, we had a three shot average of 1463. That uh, was a velocity loss of 440 feet per second, which calculated to be 23% reduction in muzzle velocity between V0 and V100, and uh, between the muzzle and the velocity at 100 yards. And so on paper, with this a small sample size that I did, the uh, XTP actually does a better job at uh, retaining its velocity than the FTX pointy bullet does. And that actually is borne out here. And we can see that the Ballistic coefficient, and if you're not familiar with the ballistic coefficient, it's just a number that's calculated based on, on um, sectional density and uh, the bullet shape and the bullet weight. Um, but the, uh, the ballistic coefficient on the FTX bullet, 140 grain is, this is a G1, I'll get further complicated, G1 ballistic coefficient of 160. The higher the number, 
the better the bullet is at, at cutting through the air. The um, 140 grain XTP has a ballistic coefficient of 0.169. So 0 0.160 on the pointy bullet, 0.169 on the hollow point. So you get a better, um, the hollow point cuts through the air better, and that is actually reflected here in the numbers with the 23% loss with the hollow point versus the 26% loss with the pointy bullet. So, what does that say? Uh, I'm, I'm not sold on the FTX, but I know a lot of you guys love them. And, um, and again, there's not enough information here for me to, to stand on a rooftop and declare anything a success or failure. But it is data. Do with it as you will. I thought it was very interesting. Hey, I'm doing this so you can see that I've got both cameras on at the same time. I actually shot this segment earlier and I was stunned with the, um, with the difference between the velocity of the Moroku Winchester and the velocity of the same. These are just hand loads, same hand loads. Um, I'm not going to show you the numbers because these are maximum hand loads with W296, uh, 357 Magnum, of course, and the Hornady XTP. They're loaded in brand new Starline brass with a CCI 550 primer. And so I'm going to shoot three rounds with the Winchester and then three rounds with the Rossi again. And just to make sure that the numbers are, are line up with what I saw earlier. So here we go. Three shots with the Rossi, or with the uh, Winchester. Same ammo, 158 grain Hornady XTP hand loads. You just have to trust me, it's the same ammo. With a, uh, with a standard deviation out of both rifles that did not exceed 16. Okay, that's much better, much better. All right, let's go crunch those numbers and see what they look like. Well, what a f that was a fun video to make. I don't know if you guys and gals enjoyed it, but I sure did. Um, but we did try to, uh, the, the main point of the video seemed to be to do a deep dive on the Hornady FTX pointy polymer tip bullets in, um, in uh, the 357 cartridge, 357 Magnum. And I think uh, most of us assume that there would be a velocity increase uh, or velocity retention uh, increase based on that pointy shape. But the ballistic coefficient uh, just didn't prove out. It was, it showed in here a ballistic coefficient of 0.16 versus the standard hollow point XTP had a ballistic coefficient of 0.169. And, um, and so that's what got me to thinking about doing a video about this. And the downrange performance, wow, it uh, kind of mimicked the ballistic coefficient because we lost 3% more um, uh, in, uh, muzzle velocity at 100 yards with the pointy FTX more than we did with the hollow point XTP. So uh, that was a surprise. Um, but uh, that's what the ballistic coefficient would have indicated. So I was glad we could show that. And then we've got the, the velocity difference between the Rossi and the Winchester. 
And let's just scroll through those real quick. And um, let's go back to the original test. And the original test, this is the, the Winchester 1892, had an average muzzle velocity of 1887, 1887 feet per second. And then the Rossi had a, had a muzzle velocity of 1769, so that's 110-ish feet per second um, increase with the Winchester over the Rossi. That was interesting. And then in our second test, I had an 1868 average, th uh, three-shot average, 1868 feet per second with the Winchester and uh, 1771, and so just under 100 feet per second difference between the Winchester and the Rossi. So, wow, uh, I'd heard the rumors on uh, online, um, but I had, didn't know that it was actually going to pan out to be that large of a number. So uh, for whatever reason, and you guys and girls let me know in the comments why you think the Rossi is not getting the same velocity. Two 20-inch 1892 designed carbines. This guy shoots 100 foot per second faster than, than this guy. Go figure. I don't know. And with that said, I think I've covered everything, um, but it was great to have you. I look forward to seeing you in the comments as always, and I'll see you in the next video.